It is now time for member state. <laughs> We've got traveling billboard. I like that. The the member from Dufferin Caledon. Thank you. With the able assistance from my uh, colleague. Thank you, uh, Vanna. <laughs> so you just. I'm honoured today to rise and recognise Corey Connolly of Melanchthon in Dufferin Caledon. Corey won this year's Royal Agricultural Winter Fair poster competition. Corey's poster design is featured on the advertisements for the Royal, which runs from November 6 through to the 16th. For the past 92 years, the Royal Agricultural Winter Fair has been the largest combined indoor agricultural and equestrian show in the world. The Royal is the Olympics in the agricultural world. It is where distinguished breeders, exhibitors, and growers from across the world come to compete and crown our champions. It's an honour for those who are selected to compete. The poster competition was open to anyone across Canada. The Royal allows people to submit their artistry in any type of medium, such as painting, photography, and drawings. In this year's Search for the Poster, the Royal wanted artwork that focused on finding a poster that represented the rich history of the fair and its importance in Ontario. As you can see, Corey's poster de depicts a cow, a sheep, a rooster, and a horse. Corey was happy that her artistry was chosen, especially because of her own family's long history in competing at the Royal. Corey said that her painting was a tribute to the world of agriculture and farming. Once again, I'd like to congratulate Corey Connolly on winning such a prestigious award and see you at the fair. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member from Kenora Rainy River. Thank you, Speaker. I'm rising today to pay respect to the people who lost their lives to protect our freedoms. Remembrance Day is a special day each year that reminds us of this, and our resolve is especially strengthened this year in light of recent events in Ottawa. We heard statements from each of the parties this morning and paid our respects with a moment of silence. When I go back to my riding this coming week, I plan to further pay respects by attending Remembrance Day ceremonies and events this year in Devlin, Fort Francis, Manitou Rapids, First Nations, Emo and Rainy River. Alongside people across Kenora Rainy River, I will be laying wreaths at these ceremonies. And with each wreath that we lay, we honour the sacrifice made by so many people who died in the line of duty. Members of the armed forces have been honoured on this day since the end of the First World War, and I am very privileged to be participating in the ceremonies in this way. Remembrance Day is also a day when veterans, Canadian Armed Forces members, RCMP officers and cadets are more visible to all of us in their full uniform, and this gives us an opportunity to appreciate them unlike any other day of the year. We are humbled by their commitment to the security of the nation and their unrelenting courage. On Remembrance Day, I'm very much looking forward to standing alongside the people in Kenora Rainy River, and I hope to see many proudly wearing the red poppy, lest we forget. Thank you. Member Sanders, the member from Brampton Springdale. Mr. Speaker, it's my pleasure to rise in this House to recognize a very special day for Sikhs in Canada and all over the world. Gurnanik Devji's Guru Purb. Speaker, today we are celebrating the birth of the first Sikh guru, Gurnanik Devji, the founder of Sikhism. Sikhism is still, is still based on his teachings and those of the nine living gurus who followed him. Our 11th guru is the Guru Granth Sahib, our holy scripture, a forever lasting testament of his teachings. Gurnanik promoted a society without discrimination and advocated for gender equality and empowerment, empowerment of women. He taught us to believe in hard work and honesty and to share with those who are less fortunate. Speaker, I will be participating in several Gurperb events this evening in my riding of Brampton Springdale, and I'm looking forward to the festivities and seeing many of my constituents with whom I will eat, pray, and celebrate. Speaker, today is a special day to celebrate cultural diversity in our great province. Let us join together and celebrate Gurnanik Devji's Gurperb. Thank you. Thank you. Number six, the member from Perry Salamuskoka. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise in this House today to recognize an extraordinary effort undertaken in my riding of Perry Sound Muskoka. Over the past week, the Royal Canadian Air Force has been leading operations on Lake Muskoka to recover a World War II era aircraft that was lost over 70 years ago. The Northrop Nomad aircraft number 3521 had crashed into Lake Muskoka on December 13, 1940, killing Lieutenant Peter Campbell and leading aircraftsman Theodore Ted Bates. I would personally like to recognize the efforts of the Lost Airmen in Muskoka project, who located the plane in 2007, and others that made the recovery a reality, including President of LAMP, Matt Fairbrass, Ron Brent, Al Bacon and Bracebridge Legion Branch 161, and many, many other community volunteers. As well, the OPP dive team who discovered the aircraft in 2010, and the Royal Canadian Navy Fleet Diving Unit who recovered the remains of the two airmen 
in 2013. With the many groups involved, one can appreciate how the success of this project has truly been a combined effort. An event was held this past Monday, November 3rd, to display the wreckage before transporting it to the National Air Force Museum in Trenton, where future generations will be able to experience this piece of local wartime history. I was fortunate enough to see the recovered pieces of the aircraft myself this past weekend. This being Remembrance Week, I can think of no more fitting time to pay tribute to those who served our country and to those whose efforts, as with the Lost Airmen in Muskoka project, continue to help remind us future generations of the immense sacrifice made by Canadians. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements, the member from London Fanshawe. Mr. Speaker, I would like to take the opportunity to speak about the centennial year of the Princess Patricia's Canadian Light Infantry. 2014 marks the 100th year of the regiment, formed in 1914 to fight in World War I. They since have been an integral part of every major Canadian campaign. While the regiment's headquarters are in Western Canada, I am proud to say that many Patricias call London home. To commemorate the centennial, a display team and a baton relay team made stops between Edmonton and Ottawa, including a stop in London, showcasing the regiment's history from World War I to the present day, bringing the past to life. They also carried a roll of honour that lists the 1,866 Patricias who have sacrificed their lives over the past hundred years. It was truly a touching tribute to the men and women of the Patricias and Canada's armed forces. In light of Remembrance Day and the recent fatal attacks on members of our armed forces right here in Canada, the centennial celebration of the Patricias has served as a timely reminder of the immense sacrifice of past, present and future Canadian soldiers lest we forget the dedication of the men and women who have fought and secured our freedom with their lives. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member Stevens, the member from Cambridge. Thank you, Speaker. Earlier today in my riding of Cambridge, a holiday tradition reached its 26th year as the, as the trees of caring were lit once more. Each year, Cambridge Memorial Hospital has lit several trees with lights, each one representing a donation made to support our hospital. This year will be no different, as this morning, the Trees of Caring kickoff was held at Cambridge Memorial Hospital. As the holiday season progresses, many people, myself included, enjoy passing by and seeing an increased number of lights with each passing day, knowing their donations will purchase new equipment. This year, as our government recently celebrated the groundbreaking of the Cambridge Memorial Hospital expansion, the fundraising efforts take on a new tone, raising money for the new and expanded sections which are now being built. As the only hospital in Cambridge and North Dumfries, Cambridge Memorial is critically important to the livelihood of our community and the over 130,000 people that it serves. Speaker, I want to say thank you to all the hospital staff and to wish the Hospital Foundation senior staff, including Jennifer White, the Executive Director, and Lori Muzak McComb, the Senior Development Officer, all the best with this year's fundraising efforts. I'll be enjoying seeing the lights go on to Cambridge Memorial Hospital trees, and I look forward to seeing the trees of caring tradition continue for many years to come. Thank you. Thank you. Member Stavis, the member from Wellington Hall. Mr. Speaker, it's my privilege to represent the people of the town of Halton Hills in this legislature. And it's come to my attention that we need a new consolidated courthouse in Milton to serve the region of Halton. Earlier this year, I was copied on a letter to Ms. Laura Oliver, president of the Halton County Law Association, from Paul Stunt, a lawyer in Oakville. He outlined the need for, quote, a new and adequate court facility to serve the residents of Halton region. In response, I gave him a call and suggested he invite the Halton area MPPs for a tour of the existing inadequate court facilities in Milton. He agreed. And I was pleased to have the opportunity to tour the courthouse on September the 10th and later to attend a town hall meeting of courthouse users, including lawyers, judges, and staff. I understand that the other Halton MPPs, my colleagues, are scheduled to be touring the courthouse next week. As always, I'm prepared to work cooperatively across party lines with other Halton MPPs to encourage the government to approve the new courthouse we need in Halton. I've also discussed this issue directly with the Attorney General and our Attorney General critic, and I appreciate their genuine interest. We are seeking a briefing with ministry staff on the approval process for new courthouses, and I look forward to hearing confirmation from the AG's office, as I hope we can have this briefing as soon as it can be possibly set up. Let's work together and get this done. 
Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member statements. The member from Kitchener Centre. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On November 11th, we will pause to mark Remembrance Day, but for a lot of young people, they often ask the question, what exactly are we remembering? My three children, who are now in their 20s, used to ask the same question when they were much younger. As a parent, I wanted to help them find a way to understand the significance of Remembrance Day and the commitment made by Canadian men and women, many of whom paid with their lives protecting the freedoms that we enjoy today. So, about 15 years ago, on Remembrance Day, we visited the Legion in Kitchener, Branch No. 50. At the entrance, there is a wall where, etched in stone, are the names of local soldiers who lost their lives in battle. Together, we looked for the name Fred Tucker, that's their great uncle, who died at the age of 23 in Holland. He was killed just a couple of days before the war in Europe ended. So that visit to the Legion to look for Uncle Fred's name became an annual tradition for our family. It helped my children make a personal connection, understanding why brave Canadians serve their country. I know that many of us have stories like this as part of our family folklore. Perhaps it was a relative who served in a battle long ago, or maybe someone in a more recent conflict. So I urge you, if you have the opportunity to help a young person reflect on the meaning of Remembrance Day, do share your stories help them appreciate why it is that we remember. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements. The member from the Republic of Lakeshore. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to pay tribute and remember those who have served and those who have fallen in the service of their country, freedom and independence. Of course, to Canadians, November 11th marks a solemn day of remembrance. However, this day also marks Poland's Independence Day. At the end of World War I, Poland was allowed to regain her independence after 123 years of partition by the Russian Empire, Prussia, and the Austro-Hungarian Empire. On November 11, 1918, the Second Polish Republic was founded under the leadership of Marshal Józef Piłsudski. For Polish Canadians and Poles worldwide, the celebration of November 11, Independence Day, is a tangible reminder of the real reasons why just nations must sometimes take up arms for the preservation of a country, a national identity, and ultimately freedom from oppression or domination of itself or other nations. For us in Canada, Poland's Independence Day also serves as a reminder of what this nation's brave men and women fought for in the Great War, the preservation of freedom and independence. For Poland, that freedom and independence was short-lived, and once again Poland and the world were plunged into armed conflict during World War II. Canadians, Poles, and many others once again took up arms side by side in defense of freedom. That freedom for Poland was not fully regained until 1989. Canadians and Poles are staunch allies, and Polish Canadians thank all Canadians who served uh, not just in the defense of this country, but of Poland. Thank you. I thank all members for their statements. It's now time.